Hey there, Jay Metcalf here from bettersax.com. I was just improvising with what we call modes. If you're working on learning how to improvise on your instrument, you've probably come across that concept already in one form or another. I've just released my latest course, The Harmonic Foundation, which covers all the chords and scales and music theory you need to know in order to improvise with confidence in all styles of music. What follows is part of that course, which should help you quickly get a grasp of how the modes work and how you can use them in all kinds of music and for improvising. It's a lot easier than you may think. In fact, I've made this PDF download for you, which has all the music theory you need on one sheet of paper. I'm calling it my music theory cheat sheet, and I've put it in the Better Sax shed for you to download for free. The link to access that is in the description below. If you've already taken my Core Essentials course, my Pentatonic Foundation course, my Blues Foundation course, you already have experience with this concept of modes. In those courses, we take scale exercises and we practice them starting on each of the different notes of the scale, on each different scale degree. This is essentially what modes are. It's the same collection of notes, the same order of notes, just changing the starting point. Think of it like the alphabet if we were to start on the letter B or C rather than A. Instead of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we could have B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Or C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Right now we're gonna learn the modes of the major scale, but I want you to be aware that this concept of shifting the starting note around in a given scale can be applied to other scales as well. The major scale has seven notes, so there are seven modes to the major scale since each note is its own potential starting point. The first mode is called the Ionian mode and it's the one we all already know. It's the plain old major scale. The next mode starts on the second degree of a major scale. In this case, that's going to be the note D and it sounds like this. That's called the Dorian mode. The Phrygian mode starts on the third scale degree of a major scale and it sounds like this. Again, rather minor sounding, right? Next up is the Lydian mode, which starts on the fourth scale degree of any major scale. The Lydian mode is a major scale with a raised fourth. Moving on, the Mixolydian scale. The Mixolydian scale starts on the fifth scale degree of your major scale, in this case, G, and it sounds like this. Next, we have the Aeolian mode, which is also commonly known as the natural minor scale. And it sounds like this. How does the Aeolian mode differ from its major counterpart? Well, it's got a flat third, a flat sixth, and a flat seventh. Notice that a flat third is always gonna give a scale a minor sound or characteristic. Our next and final mode on the seventh scale degree of the major scale is the Locrian mode, and it sounds like this. Whenever we study music theory, it's so important that we apply what we've learned to playing actual music on our instrument right away. If we don't do that, the concepts tend to remain abstract and a bit intangible. So let me quickly demonstrate how I can use the modes of the major scale to improvise over a few different chords. <laughs>
played five different modes over five different types of chord, but I only used seven different notes. Every one of those modes shares the same exact seven notes as a C major scale. So you see on paper, what might appear to be very complicated, in reality, not so much. Now, while we may be able to fit all of the music theory concepts on one sheet of paper, understanding all that stuff does take a bit of time and study. In my Harmonic Foundation course, I cover the modes in detail, as well as many more topics, starting from the most basic all the way up to pretty advanced stuff. I lay it all out for you in a way that's easily understandable and show you ways to practice the material on your instrument. This way you get the sound in your ear, the notes under your fingers, and the concept fully absorbed into your brain so that you can start using it to make music. Music theory is a vast topic, but we don't need every nuanced detail that you'd find in a textbook. In practical application, the music theory we really need is limited to a manageable list of concepts and topics that anyone can master with a little bit of practice and study. That's the idea behind the Harmonic Foundation. It's specifically designed for people who want the necessary tools to make the music they hear on recordings and in their heads. If you purchase the course, you get lifetime access, so there's no limitations on how long you could take to go through the course or how many times you can revisit the lessons. Along with the scale and chord exercises, I've included fun ear training exercises, quizzes, and plenty of examples of me playing the concepts on my saxophone. In total, there are over 70 detailed video lessons containing more than three hours of content like this. For the launch of the Harmonic Foundation course, I'm offering an introductory discount, so be sure to click the link in the description below to take advantage of that. There will also be a free live masterclass for everyone who enrolls where we're gonna dive in a bit deeper to some of the concepts in the course. I'm looking forward to helping you take your playing to the next level and beyond, and I hope to see you soon in the members area of bettersax.com.